Okay, now I want to talk about something called seeing graphs, which is the first real graphics -y topic that we have. We finally have enough math to do something real with graphics. So what a scene graph is, it's a hierarchy of geometry. So when you make complicated scenes or complicated virtual worlds, it's easy if you focus on each part of the virtual world by itself. So maybe I know how to make a bed frame and I know how to make a mattress by itself. And I know how to make a closet. Um, and I know how to make a nightstand. But if I want to put them together, then they have to kind of move around, right? They might need to rotate, they might need to translate. I might even actually want to make this nightstand a little taller, so I might want to scale it, right? So what I can do is specify matrices that tell me how to do those things. And at the top level, what I can say is, okay, look, yeah, let's let's back up to the top first and think kind of top down. So this bedroom can be divided into three areas. So I'm stealing this example from actually somebody I took graduate graphics with. He wrote a paper on scene graphs. Um, but so I stole his example. So he divided his bedroom into three parts. He said, at a top level, I kind of want to think about the sleep area by itself. I want to think about the storage area by itself. And I want to think about the paintings by themselves. OK. Um, and what I should do is I should specify a matrix, matrix to place the storage area. So maybe I've defined the storage area locally, and I've said this is what it looks like, but I'm going to need to move that whole thing. So I'll say this matrix T8 maybe holds a, holds a translation. Um, the paintings also, you know, I might have done a lot of work to specify them. And now I just want to move them to the right of the storage area, and maybe I want to rotate them 180 degrees. OK, so T9 holds that matrix that does that. Um, and the sleep area has been all put together, and now I need to put that to the right of everything. So T7 is going to hold that matrix. Okay, but now the sleep area itself is actually made up of these four different things. And they each have their own matrix with respect to the sleep area. So before I even put the sleep area where it's going to be, I actually have to assemble these four objects together. So I have a matrix that tells me how to move this ottoman into the sleep area and this nightstand in the sleep area and the rug and the bed. So I do all those things first and then I can move the sleep area into the bedroom. Okay, so that's where we start to get this hierarchy and that's why you draw, draw it as a tree. So, for example, if I wanted to know, where is this ottoman going to end up in the bedroom? Well, I would actually walk down the tree. I would say, okay, I want to rotate the whole thing by T7. So everything under here, or I want to translate, everything under here gets translated by T7. But then within there, I also had to know how to translate these things. Okay. So you walk down the tree, and the rule is, is actually... If I have a vector that's in the local coordinate system of the ottoman, the way to move that vector into our what we call world coordinates, so let's say we have this vector here. So this is an ottoman coordinates. So the way, the way to move that vector into world coordinates, so we're going to move that vector up here. So where's the ottoman? Yeah, it's somewhere up here. So we're going to have to translate that, right? maybe rotate it a little bit. Um, the way to get the matrix that does that is to walk down the tree. So you get T7 times T6, and then times that vector V. So you walk down the tree, and you start on the left, so T7, and then T6. OK, so this, this moves me from Ottoman coordinates, from V in Ottoman chords to world chords, OK? So up here, I'm saying that the bedroom is my world coordinates. So you could say bedroom coordinates, but more generally, we call them world coordinates. So you walk down the tree, and the thing all the way at the top is the leftmost thing. The thing at the bottom is the rightmost thing. 
So what this says actually is, is to move my vector v from Ottoman coordinates into world coordinates, I first have to multiply by t6. So I first do the transformation that takes me to the sleep area. Then I do the transformation that takes me to the bedroom area. So even though I designed this from the top down, I said, okay, look, I want to move the whole sleep area by t7. And then within the sleep area, I want to move these things. You actually apply them in the other order. So you, you move them in the sleep area first, and then you move them to the bedroom. So that's very important. So we actually go from left to right as we're walking down the tree. We arrange the matrices from left to right, but we then multiply them in, in the way that we always do. So starting at the right. OK, so as another example, let's look and see, well, what if we had a vector that was in the coordinate system of this mattress? And we wanted to know, where does that vector end up in world coordinates? So that mattress is eventually going to end up somewhere up here. And I want to know, where is that vector point? So I'm going to walk down. I'm going to say, OK, so I, I go T7. And then T3 gets me to the bed, and then T1 gets me the mattress. So that's T7 times T3 times T1, and then times that vector. So I could take all of the, all the points on the bed, multiply them by T1, then by T3, then by T7, and I get to world coordinates for the, for the mattress. And so that's all there is to it. But the really cool thing about this is we get to design a hierarchy of geometry. And once I figure out how to make a bed, I can actually copy this whole thing, all this effort I went through, and I can make multiple beds. So you can recursively include little subtrees in other places. OK, so that's all there is to a scene graph. Now, what I've done, actually, is I've set up, um, I'm still in the process of, make, of updating this for, for this year. But last, you're going to have a similar assignment where you make these using JSON. So here's an example of a scene I made. And here's the JSON to the left. So what I did was, OK, I put in a bunch of different objects. Um, I put in a square, but I actually scaled that square by 20 in the x and y and z. Um, I put in a sphere, but I actually scaled that sphere by a factor of 2 in X, and, and that's an ellipsoid. Then I move this thing over, but actually this thing has three things in it. This thing has placed a sphere, a cone, and a cylinder. Um, over here, I've actually gone through two steps before I got to this box. It started off as a cube, but, but I said I want you to rotate by 45 degrees, and then within that, I want you to scale by two. So the effect is scaling it by two, then rotating by 45 degrees. But what I'm trying to show here is that you can specify this all in JSON. So every node of the tree is an object. It has a transform transformation specified with it. Um, every node also has a set of shapes that reside at that node. So in our scene graph before, those shapes were, you know, like the mattress, the closet, the nightstand. Um, in this assignment, I'm starting off with some basic shapes like a cube or, you know, a box or a cylinder. And so you can specify those. Those are also lists of objects, and those objects have different fields. Like a box has a length of width of height and a center. And also you can specify material properties, so you can, you can give it a color. Um, but each node can also have children of its own. So this is how you make a tree out of it. So each node has a list of objects themselves, which are nodes. So, so it has, sorry, it has a list of children. The children are each objects, which themselves are nodes. And they have their own transformation and their own children. And those children can have transformations. So that's how you build up a tree, a scene tree or scene graph. So I'm just going to have you do a very simple example using the syntax. I'll give you most of it already. I'll just want you to update one of the matrices in here to rotate a table. So I'm going to make a table out of a bunch of boxes, and I want you to rotate that table. And then we'll talk about this more in class.